Better shake your booties for black girl nerves. Better shake your booties for black girl nerves. Laura, this is quite. First, let me just say, this is probably the most interesting cast of characters I have ever seen. This story is so unique and has so many people that add to the pot and really make the story reveal itself. You being at the head of that cast, what first attracted you to this role? Um, so I, I, was, uh, I was sent the script and um, I, I, re I read uh, uh, a woman who was um, pompous and unapologetic and entitled and, and privileged. And I guess that um, as, a, as a black woman, I'd, I'd never really engaged with those kind of um, uh, characteristics before. Um, we're so often expected to be, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the strong black woman. And so it, it, I, I, there was a, a, a possibility for, for a, 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 a bit, I guess, a bit of freedom. Um, and but she's also she's also has so much um, heart and and patience and um, believes in something bigger than her own self. So I think yeah, there were there were characteristics that I think it were kind of like dream characteristics. I would say so. I was very very excited to to go up for the role. I that's exactly what I found so charming. I thought she was so smart and witty and tough, but at the core, you could see some deep-rooted sadness that people will find out over the course of the journey of, of Lady Sybil and, and her band of merry misfits there <laughs> as they go along with their journey. When, uh, when you have a story like this, you know, it's based on uh, Terry Pratchett's uh, novels. So there'll be people who are familiar with the novels and people who have never read it before, but are seeing a really unique story. What's something they should keep in mind as they watch the show from the beginning and begin this journey with the characters? They should keep in mind that it's a, it's a story about humanity and the possibility for uh, change. And, um, and also the, the ability to, uh, it's, a, it's a story about hope and how much we can make space for each other and that if we all stand together, um, we can really affect change. So that's, that's I would say, whether or not you've read the books, um, that's, that's hopefully what um, we have achieved. So we will, we will see. Yeah, well, Lady Sybil, she is so, uh, she's just a really unique character. I've never seen a character like that. I love the, the little clever clapbacks. I like that she's strong when she needs to be strong and interesting and the costuming and, the, and things hiding under the costumes that people <laughs> want to get a chance to see. When, where is the root, do you think, of that? Is there, would you, is, what can you say about who she is that won't spoil too much of the season? Just the fact that she is a lady, so that implies that she is a, like a, a royal or an elevated figure in society. Yes, yes. so she's... Um... So she's, yeah, she's basically, she's the last member of, of nobility or rank before. And um, I would say that in, in something was taken away from her too soon. Um, and so she, she had to experience um, uh, intense loneliness and, and, and she had to figure out how to navigate that prematurely. And so it, 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 there's something about, she, she has an Achilles heel and she has, she has a sadness um, that we that we you know as you as you say without spoiling anything we 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 see her sort of deal with that and also come out of that perhaps and uh, she finds she finds I think hope in in the watch in the team in in Sam Vimes and um, so yeah I think she she's kind of um, I don't know for me she she was a, a true a true gift to play There's, there are many layers to her. Um, and then she's also just ridiculously ridiculous and funny and, and wild. So yeah, it was a yeah, it was a real pleasure. <laughs> just so clever, and she's she's become part of this crew, the Watch, as people know. And their city is sort of it's like a lawless city, but not a lawless city. Like there's some very distinct rules of how the people can operate within yeah. the city structure, but they are kind of 
on a spectrum of, of good and bad city. It's like it's the flip where what you think would be bad in a city is the law and what yeah. would be good in the city is against the law. When you read and got deep into the, the telling of that story, was it like a mind flip for you? Or how did you react to knowing what the bounds of this unique city was? Um, so I guess there's, a, there's an element to it which is extremely comical. Um, and so, and that, that was always, um, that was kind of, I guess, the easier, the easier aspect of, of that. Um, I would say, I, I would say that we live in a world in which crime is legal. So, so just to, so animal pork is, is crime is legal and there are quotas that need to be filled. So there, ha there has to be, so because crime got so bad, they, they came up with a, um, a system in which you fill a certain quota uh, to, um, so there has to be a certain amount of robberies a year. There have to be a certain amount of, of assassinations or inhumations a year. Um, and just so that, you know, then we all know where we stand. And, and so we're, we're living in a, in a uh, basically a world in which you book, you, you literally book your, your robbery um, <laughs> with, with the Thieves Guild. And, and so I, I found that actually it wasn't too dissimilar to the world that we live in now. Um, I think that, that we experience incredible injustices and people don't get, um, they, there, there is no repercussions for, for many criminals. Um, and so I, I, I think I attached myself to that quite a lot. And I think, and, and that was my, my anchor into our world. If it, it was uh, the, the snakes and ladder sort of like, yeah, I understand. I understand where we're at. This makes sense to me. It actually wasn't a mind hmm. mess up. Yeah, yeah, no, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and yeah. lastly some of the most enjoyable things to me were almost like intangibles like the little side comments there's other instruments that have voices in the show and some of the dialogue that those other things are having amongst with each other when you're filming those things and people will see it and they'll see what I'm talking about, can you hear those things? Or did you have to wait until after to see, well, I guess I won't spoil it. There's a sword and the sword <laughs> has, keeps up quite a running commentary and the sword is something else. Do you guys hear those things when you're filming or did you have to wait and see it after? Um, so we, um, so, so Matt Barry who plays the sword, uh, we didn't have him on set with us, but we had an amazing actor who had this in incredible voice uh, who, who was always on set uh, doing the lines uh, so that we, we had someone to react to. Um, and um, I mean, the sword got funnier and funnier, um, but I, 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 do, I do wish we'd had Matt Berry. <laughs> to be honest, I think we probably wouldn't have been able to get through the scenes through uh, corpsing too much, but um, so maybe, maybe it was a good thing that he wasn't there. <laughs> The sword is just dear to my heart and just everything was, this was so interesting. I really, really liked it. And it was very fun to see something that I'd never seen before. Thank you so much for your time and your performance. It's really a very clever and very fun series. And um, I'm glad I had a chance to talk to you about it. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Take care. Take care. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds.